Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. I've never been in a helicopter before. It's kind of cool that I'm the first time I've ever been in one is that I'm flying one now. Big Island students learn how to fly real helicopters. Plus, a Navy vet learns how to cope with severe pain. A Maui writer teacher brings Hawaii's plantation days back to life on the printed page. Sharpen your fashion sense and learn how to tie a bow tie. Learn about the special bond between a Hawaiian immersion school on Kauai and a university in Minnesota. And meet the grandson of Mary Kavena Pukui, one of the most beloved Hawaiian cultural icons of all time. All on this episode of the nation's first statewide student news network, Hiki No Can Do. We're here at Hawaii Preparatory Academy in Waimea on Hawaii Island. Throughout this episode of Hiki No, we'll learn about the people who teach our school looking beautiful. TJ Kalono Pio, class of 1994, is a head of maintenance, but also Simon Mason. His latest job was setting the foundation for two solid trees, which stand 14 feet above Kennedy Square. These two solid trees have a 30 foot wingspan and collect nine kilowatts per day, completely sustaining our student union. Now, let's join a group of HBA middle schoolers who are learning to fly. I've never been in a helicopter before, and I haven't been 50 yards from one or 50 feet from one, so it's kind of cool that I'm, the first time I've ever been in one is that I'm flying one now. Every year, Hawaii Preparatory Academy, located in the hills of Waimea, on the island of Hawaii, holds a theme week for its middle school students. The 2016 Come Fly With Me program offers students an introduction to the aeronautical field, from classroom instruction to actual flight time. Well, we spent Monday and Tuesday um, learning about the different parts of a helicopter and how to fly it. Uh, about the controls and how there are four different, and that there's not just one steering wheel, but there's four different that you use your feet and your hands. Uh, the ability to think quickly on their feet. Um, being in the air is a lot different than driving, so situations change pretty quickly. Being calm, like being calm underwater, is kind of the same as being calm up in the air. You have to be calm and keep stable. It was really fun just to be up there and having the wind flowing in through to your face and getting that view. How much fun you can have. I always thought it would be sort of, it's all work and you, it's, it's not easy, but once you get the hang of it, you sort of, gets a lot easier and funner. Probably the, the turning, because I literally felt like I was gonna fall out, but it's so cool when you, when you turn, but you just look down and it's wide open space and you can see blue sky all around you, some clouds, and it's just really fun to see. Mr. Piercy, middle school teacher and pilot in his own right, helped to coordinate the proper safety protocols, multimedia for teaching, and transportation for the program. When I was in 8th grade, I had a similar experience where I got up in the air with uh, an 8th grade math teacher and uh, took, to, took to flight from there. Love it. For kids to understand that there's, there's many careers uh, within the aviation field. Mr. Q1 provided real life experience as a medevac pilot and introduced the students to careers in the aviation field. I don't know if they understood it could be a career. I thought they were thinking they were, they were going to be flying model airplanes, that kind of such. but. Uh, they're seeing it from different aspects. I've always sort of wanted to have the feeling of flying and being free, and this gave me that opportunity. From desks to the cockpit, the Come Fly With Me program gave students their first taste of a career in the aviation field. This is Chad Aoki from Hoi Preparatory Academy for Hikino. Hikino is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hikino Can Do. Aloha, welcome to Wainai High School, located on the leeward coast of Oahu. We are here at the Lokahi Wall, the most iconic mural at Wainai High School. This mural was produced by the class of 2007. 
It is a creative addition to the school's beauty and signifies the unity and harmony among our students. In addition to this artwork, various murals are located all over campus to show off the everlasting pride that Wina has to offer. Hikino students in our journalism class produced this story about a man whose life has changed after his motorcycle accident. Philippians. I've read the Bible probably seven times, cover to cover, so I'm a student of the Word of God. I mean, look where I think it is. My hobbies are gardening, cleaning up, raking leaves. I planted all these plants too. Everything here, I put all these cement cinder blocks in. You know, I, I'm this guy who's always worked. I painted all this too. Started to paint the house, I haven't finished yet. I used to box, I used to do martial arts, I know how to fight. I, I think because my job was so high paced before, you know, like uh, Navy chief, get the job done, lead, lead. And then I uh, had the motorcycle accident, lost my leg, back ache, neck ache, stump ache. So dealing with the chronic pain and just trying to do anything I can because if I just sit here alone in my room, I get very depressed. But I got one leg, lots of pain. And uh, what do I do? Do I complain about it all day? Oh, that gets old. Hearing myself complain, I'm sick of that. What else can I do? I can give up. I know that whenever the fiery darts come about like, oh, I wish I was never born, crap like that, uh, they don't last long. There's something inside me that says, I'm gonna fight today. You don't have it that bad, and so I tell myself that. Robert, you don't have it that bad. I just wish I had the enemy in front of me right now. I would just beat the crap out of him, but I can't do that, right? What's the enemy? I don't know, what's the enemy? I'm gonna take this guy down, man. I'm married, I got four kids, there's laundry that needs to get done. I can do it, I'm a strong guy, I got upper body strength, you know, I push myself around the wheelchair. There you go. I'm just gonna keep getting up and going to work, I guess. Not, I mean, not to a job that will pay me money. You gotta deal with it, you gotta find something inside of you. And then you got other scripture that talks about Whatever things are kind, whatever things are loving, whatever things are of a good report, think on these things. And the God of peace, of untroubled, undisturbed well-being will be with you. I don't feel left out or special. I don't feel abandoned. And uh, when I feel good, I'm gonna go to Costco and buy groceries. Those are the goals. This is Melina Marquez from Waianae High School with a story about my father, for he you know. Stay tuned after the show to find out what students who created this story learned from their experience. Aloha and welcome to Seabury Hall, located on the beautiful slopes of Haleakala on Maui. The Seabury Hall campus covers 76 acres of land and has a variety of plants that take a lot of work to maintain. We also have many historical buildings, such as Cooper House and the library, which take a lot of time and effort to keep in top condition. This makes it very challenging to maintain Seabury's beauty. Therefore, our maintenance crew and custodial workers all have to be able to do a variety of jobs around the campus. Through their hard work, they help to keep our campus looking beautiful all year long. The students of our Hikino class have produced the following media piece that will show you how one of our English teachers, Mrs. Martellas, wrote and created her books. The morning sun slanted in, catching a bunch of ripening bananas hanging from the ceiling. The kitchen was full of the breakfast smells of Portuguese sausage and eggs, and Sarah was sipping a cup of homemade coffee, hand-picked, 
home roasted, and as the Kapuna always said, with enough caffeine to wake up a dead horse. For a quarter of a century, Mrs. Gail Martellis has been teaching English at Seabury Hall Middle School in Upcountry Maui. She is also a writer who wants to keep the memories of the plantation era alive. I realized that the 1950s um, plantation days of Hawaii, that that was really passing away, that it resides now only in the memory of a very few people. I really felt that was a story that needed to be told. So, Mrs. Martellus wrote a novel, The Spirit of Mango House. She baked sweet bread and took in the laundry of the field workers. Denim shirts and work pants stained red with volcanic dirt. Rachel boiled them outside in 55-gallon drums to wash them, then starched, ironed, and delivered them so the workers could wear them back into the fields again. Everyone knew Rachel Soros just barely kept her family fed. The driving reality was that they all shared a common lot because they were all dirt poor. Uh, toiling in indentured servitude in the fields and in the mills. My Uncle Bully told me he went in a lava tube once and he heard spirits marching. And he knew it was spirits because he didn't see anything, but he heard the feet tramping by and he got cold all over. I was interested in really expressing that, that dimensional interplay between this reality, this common plane we call reality, and the mystical spiritual dimension because it was true for the people of those times and you know you can still feel it in the people in the land of Hawaii today that we walk in two worlds the one we can see and the one we can't and that is the driving dynamic interplay at the very core of the story it's been really wonderful to be able to bring my own creative process to help inform the student's writing journey. And I always tell the students um, to consider the power of the written word, whereby you can take a two-dimensional plane like this, I mean, look how thin that is, and you can create a whole story world that just rises right up off of the page so you can see it and hear it and experience and really feel it. This is Dominic Caroso from Seabury Hall Middle School for Hiki no. Up next, students from Oahu's Hawaii Technology Academy show us how to turn an old school men's accessory into a bold fashion statement. On special occasions, or on a day you feel like being flashy, what better way to stand out than with a tie? But here's the problem. Ties aren't really flashy. They're more business, boring, and unflattering. So, to give a little extra, how about a bow tie? First, get a bow tie from a friend or at a clothing store. Second, put the tie around your neck with the tag on your neck. Make sure one side is longer than the other. Third, take the longer side and overlap the shorter side. Pull the longer side through into a simple knot. Next, take the shorter side and fold it into the form of a final bow tie shape. Take the longer side and overlap it once again so it falls right down the middle of the shorter side. The long side of your tie has made a tiny hole from overlapping the shorter side. Pull that longer side through the hole. The last step is to tighten your bow tie and take some time to make it look good. And now you know how to make a bow tie. Enjoy looking fresh. This is Hawaii Technology Academy for Hiki No. Aloha, mahalo ke kipana mai ki kole ni kaha. I am a tumata a tumana ta I not away. Malama me tai o lana ni o kanahele i ta pa hale o ke kola ni o ke kaha me na mea ola a me na tubo iwi a me na mea i lawe ia mai e kanaka maluno to wa. Nya e hana ana matakula o nui o ya i ta piri ana me to hana mata a o ana i ta na mau keiti. Mai ta matua mai loa ia lako ta mahalo maoli i ta malama ana i na mea ola a me na tumula au. Mahalo nui ta kula i aia no ta nui o tono kotua ana mai. Ma tia mulelo mai na hau mana o ke kula ni au ke kaha. E nana ia ana ta pidina tui to wa ma waina o ta matua kula a me ta kula nui o St. Thomas ma mine koka. 
The collaboration with Kekula started in about 2002 and uh, we've been coming here every year or every other year since then. Our students are studying for one month and we spend um, part of our time on Kauai and then including Kekula. My name is Kumulu. Each year when we come to Hawaii we bring 26 students. The majority of them are from the University of St. Thomas. The benefits to our students are so many. Um, when we start the course, we lay out the theoretical background, including the importance of language and culture, but it's one thing to read about it and another thing to actually experience it, to have that hands-on experience. Where were you raised? Where was I raised? Uh, I was raised in uh, Hamlet. Um, none of us have any experience with a bilingual school or a charter school, so we learn about bilingual education. We're learning about the Waimea River, the history, the current situation, including the Russian fort, um, Taro, um, the importance where Captain Cook landed, um, the importance of the river to this community. We're learning much from the students, which is um, such a neat experience that the students become our teachers. And then today we're um, out visiting the places that we've learned about, and it's a, a reversal, if you will, with the students being our educators. The name of the river on this side is Wyoming River. One of the most enjoyable aspects of this course for me is the passion that our students have for Hawaii and for Kekula when they return to the mainland. In fact, we have one student who completed her master's degree in educational leadership, where she studied the ways in which Native cultures use education to learn about their history and to move forward. Boil it, then you pound it, add water, and you got your um, one of the, her findings um, is that technology has had a very important part um, on their education that the students reported that the fact that some of the stories that they're doing that are on YouTube or on public television make them um, very proud of their language and very proud of their culture. Alex is now in a doctoral program at the University of Hawaii about this topic, and so perhaps people around the world will hear about Keikula Nihihao Okakaha and the importance of what you are doing here. Aloha and welcome to Hawaiian Mission Academy located in the Makiki District of Honolulu. Keeping our school beautiful is one of our top priorities. Our campus was once the royal estate of Princess Abigail Kawananakoa. Bricks left over from her swimming pool were repurposed to help beautify the school grounds. This school year it was decided to return the bricks to the original location and repurpose them as a patio for the school dormitory. Students feel honored to touch a piece of Hawaiian history as they work to keep the grounds beautiful. Hikino students in our journalism class produced the following story of how Laakea Suganuma keeps Hawaiian cultural practices alive in today's society. My grandmother was the kindest person I ever knew, was willing to share with anybody. She would never say anything derogatory about anybody. She wrote some songs that she'd sing every morning as I got up and open the doors and windows and she'd just sing songs. And, uh, she, but she wasn't one to be in the spotlight, which is very Hawaiian. She would like to stay in the background. She got a lot of awards and accolades, but I think she just wanted to do her work. Laakea Suganuma was given to his grandmother, Mary Kavenai Pukui, who was named a living treasure of Hawaii. I don't think I realized the extent of what she did until I was an adult. She raised him from the time he was two months old, giving Laakea a deep respect for the Hawaiian culture she dedicated her life to preserving. Through his grandmother's influence, Laakea showed an interest in his heritage, which led him to seek out the Hawaiian cultural practices that interested him as a young boy. Weapons and the pursuit of an ancient fighting art called Lua. Lua is a uh, fighting art. It's actually a bone-breaking art. It's not a tournament sport, but it's an ancient art. You know, warfare was a favorite pastime of the elite, believe it or not. They, they, they love fighting, and so uh, all of the chiefs were trained, and 
a lot of the leaders and, and special people were trained in this art. And it's handed down in families and kept quiet. But it's just part of the culture. His grandmother left some of her original written works with La'akea, who has now founded the Mary Kavena Pakui Cultural Preservation Society. And again, our purpose is to be a uh, unique uh, educational resource. Uh, we want to address uh, different aspects of the culture. Number one, I see a, a real lack of uh, cultural understanding. And I know she dedicated her life to preservation of the culture. So there are a lot of people nowadays who don't uh, really know the culture, and there's a lot of people making up things. And, and so that kind of uh, prompted me to say, you know, we ought to do something about this. His drive to educate and preserve his grandmother's legacy has cast him in her footsteps as a true living Hawaiian treasure. This is Melanie Diaz from Hawaiian Mission Academy for Hiki No. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hiki No. We hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as we enjoyed sharing them with you. Stay tuned after the credits to find what some students learned from working on this show. More proof that Hawaii students, Hikino, can do. after the credits to find out what some students learn from the Hikino experience. I think doing this story um, changed my relationship with my dad because ever since like right after um, I did the story I just felt like I was able to talk to him. The story Living With Pain was about my dad. He lost his leg in a motorcycle accident a few years back, and I guess he's just talking about what he does on a day-to-day -day basis and how he dealt with his, the pain and living with it. The first shoot day, I had the camera. I shot the interview, did a lot of B-roll, and Melina interviewed her dad. When he was talking, I was kind of amazed. I just saw him as, a, I guess, someone to look up to because not a lot of people go through that kind of uh, hard times. So Shana um, transcribed it, and then together we just looked at like what hit us, I guess, like powerful, sound bites and we just highlighted it, grabbed it and pulled it down and then we just tried to arrange them in some kind of way that it told a story. I was really thankful that she did the, all the transcribing because the thought of having to go back and like look at what he, all he, that he talked about kind of made me uncomfortable. So I was really glad that I had someone that could, I guess, help me through that type of um, journey. I knew that Melina was going to be uh, emotional and I would be too because her dad is telling his story of what happened that changed all their lives. I was glad to have helped her through this time because um, I would need someone there for me if the roles were reversed. 
I think doing this story um, changed my relationship with my dad because ever since, like, right after um, I did the story, I just felt like I was able to talk to him just about anything. And I would just come and talk to him sometimes, and then, like, it would just feel normal, I guess. A little, a little more normal than how it used to before that. I think Melina needed to get this story done because she wanted to show other people that the hard times aren't going to last forever and that I think she just wanted to get her story and her father's story out there. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hikino.